Hello, and welcome back to Whale Jaw 3D! So let's show you how we can build a wheel in Blender. Let's delete the cube, and what we need to do is we need to import an image as a plane. So if we go to image and import image as plane, it's one of your add-ons if you can't find it. So I managed to find an image. This is the best one I could find, but if we rotate, I think it's the Y90 make it so it's flat and then we go from the top you can't see it because you're not in shader mode yet so what we need to do is center this image so if we just press G and move it the best we can to the center and this is this has worked out well for us because we want one spoke to be in the dead center there look and that's turned out great for us so next we need to add a circle and what we need to make sure is that the amount of vertices is multiplied by the amount of spokes. It's really complicated, but basically we need six spokes and six vertices. Yeah, does that make sense? So what you can do is put six times six in here and then press enter and it'll work it out for you. Now we have 36 spokes. So if we go into edit mode and then scale it down, we can see one of our vertices is smack bang on in the middle and that's exactly how we want it really. It's like the, the spokes there, that one's there, you know what I mean? It's lining up perfect. So what we can do now is select the ones that we want, which is basically these ones here. Look. And if we press select and invert, it will select all the other ones except those ones. And we can basically press delete those vertices. So we're just left with these three here. Now what we need to do is model a spoke quickly. So <clears throat> it's very basic, but before we start, we're going to delete half of the vertices. You probably guessed it, we're going to bang on a modifier. In particular, the mirror modifier. So that it just halves the workload basically. Now what we can do is go in and refine this, this spoke basically. So we obviously need a bit more geometry. So if we press Control R, we can bang one that way. And if we press Control R again, bring one down here, we can bang one there. So once you've modeled it, you'll have something that looks like this. What we can do is quickly move down our image like that, so we can actually see. <clears throat> so the next thing we need to do is obviously do the Z coordinates now, don't we? So we know that this edge here is going to curl down because we've looked at our reference images. So what I found the best way of doing this was is select one of these, move it down, G, Z, and you've got yourself a nice curved edge kind of thing. The next thing we need to do is actually give it an edge, you know what I mean? So select this edge we press extrude, go down on the Z, just bring it down plenty like that kind of thing so that we've actually got a nice solid spoke now, yeah? You can go in, tidy it up, press GG just to level these out, like that. And that's absolutely perfect, that. We could do with extruding these down as well, ideally, so if we just press extrude and then Z, bring it down. If we go back to the vert mode and make sure that we join that corner together as well using M for merge and we've got ourselves a spoke which is lovely I do believe as well we don't need this edge here because when we when we mirror it it'll create problems so if we delete that face there yeah now the next thing we need to correct as well is you can see that that extrusion there shrinks a little bit so we need to go around and select these edges like this and if we go to the top view, press G, we can move them. You know what I mean? So if I just do that now quickly. So we now have our slightly scaled extrusion. I might just tweak that one a little bit there. It's all guesswork basically, but we now have a, a good enough spoke, I would say. I'd say the next thing we need to do is create the rim. So in order to do that, if we back out, and we create another circle. But this time, we want two times the vertices. So if you just press times two, like that, 
and you'll have 72. And we go back into edit mode and scale that down so it's actually somewhere like we need to probably start from the outside i'd say so if we go up here look we can see our vertices are lining up bang on in the middle and if we run a line up here look we can see we've got one in the kind of the middle it's not a problem if there isn't one in the middle it just helps it's just easier yeah and what we need to now basically do is model this rim can you see all these edges here we need to do that using extrude scale extrude scale extrude scale so let me quickly just model that wheel So now we've modelled a wheel, we can think about separating a segment off so that we can pair it with our spoke. So if we go back in and we go into Z mode like this, what we need to do is pinch about this many vertices. If we just turn those ones off, make sure you've got your see-through mode on as well, your x-ray, so that you get all vertices. So if you pinch off from the middle, say this many I think it's up to this one we'll soon see if it works so if we get this many here what I like to do is just press Control D for duplicate and then press P to separate that duplication into a new layer yeah and then if we back out and quickly go into this one here it's just so if you want to go back then you've got that one there aren't you? you know what I mean then we can go back into here and we can see we've got this little segment yeah what we need to do is join that segment now to this spoke. So if we now press shift and select this one as well, we can press control and J and it'll join them both together. And as you can see, it's formed a nice rim for us. So if we go back into edit mode, we can see that we've got a joined mesh. Oh my days. Ah. So we need to merge these two together. So. What we can do is, is basically select one of these rings here by pressing Alt and then selecting it or gather the whole one and then press GG to move it exactly on the lines and get it round about where it needs to be. Now this is going to break your circle, it's not going to be a perfect circle anymore. It's not a problem, we can fix that later on. What we need to do is get equal geometry so we can merge these two together, yeah? So the next thing is select that face there, just pinch it, that one and that one, and we need to delete them. Now, the next task we need to do is go into our verts mode using number one, press one of the verts, and then shift and select the other one, so that when we press M, it will give us the option, like, we can either it be at the first or the last. We want to be at the last so that it matches the wheel. So if we press that, it's now joined those two together, and we can repeat this process here. Now, with this spoke, I kind of want it to join, not... We'll join it to the last, because I want to preserve the wheel. But we can, what we can do after that is just basically move it. So if we press GG, and we can bring it back to whereabouts it was, yeah? Now if we repeat this for the inside bit here. Merge at last. Merge at last. We, can, we have now joined our model together, which is lovely. Excellent. Now the next thing we need to do is turn off or move this background because it's in the way. So if we press G and Z and just knock it all the way down there, out of the way, we can then come back in. And we can look underneath and we can see we've got an open model. We need to fill this section here. Yeah. So what we can do is basically select this edge. Yeah. We need to... Alright, then we need a custom edge selection. So if we press this one here and then press and hold control, it'll find the shortest route to the next where you click in. So if we press that look, it'll select that whole edge. And what we need to do is extrude it and send it inwards, yeah? So I press extrude, X. <clears throat> because there's a mirror there, we need to basically flatten them all out. So I'll quickly do that. And if we look under here, look, we need to now join these together. So we need to run another we need to run another line of vertices down down there so that we can match this one here, yeah? So if we press Control R and just knock one in, then what we can do is join these together as well. So merge at last. Merge at the last. Right, just quickly tweak those, chuck them in there. And we've basically filled in the underside of our spoke. Lovely. So now we've done that, we can go around and 
basically inspect and check the model and just tweak anything that you feel like just needs a little tweak you know what i mean like this one here you can just bring it in a little bring it in a little bit like tidy up the vertices basically always trying to like use gg to keep everything in line you know what i mean just tidy it up basically and i think that should do is we need to make sure that this has some dish on it as well now if we press g and z pull it down because it's got some dish and then we select these ones here say like you want to have the perfect straight line from there to there what you can simply do is press gg pull it all the way to one side and then press gg again pull it all the way to the other side and then press gg and put it back in the middle and you will have pretty much the exact straight line and it's just a really quick way of like leveling things out you know what i mean you know you've got that odd vertice and you're trying to like move it around and stuff like that just press gg and move it around all the vertices and it'll effectively level it out find the medium point yeah it's a good tip there but now we're here so now we're here it'd be advantageous for you to now add any creases that you would like it depends whether you're going to use bevels or creases i, I like creases myself so if you go in go into your items add your crease Click on this one, edge crease. You know what I mean? And go and tackle everything now because it's a lot quicker sometimes. Because you'll find that you'll have like issues around here where you don't necessarily want to crease. So you have to go in and like do a little extra work for it. But if you was to mirror this six times, you'd have to do this six times, you see. So it's best to do it now. Yeah? So we've got all those creases, whereabouts we want them on, on there, don't we? So what we can do now is basically add an array modifier to make five more spokes for us. So if we back out and we center up, what we need to do is add an empty. This empty is basically going to be a handle to turn our array modifier. So now we've got this empty, we can basically click back on our spoke and add an array modifier. But with this, we don't want the relative offset. We want an object offset because we want to use the empty as the offsetting tool, the handle. So if we click on that one, and we know we want six spokes, don't we? So if we go up to six, and then we can click back on our empty there, look. So when we press rotate, it will array it for us, yeah? So all you've got to do now is find the end, boop, there. And you basically now... We've got to match our image, haven't we? So if we match our image, there we go. We've basically got our wheel, haven't we? we I think we're going to have overlapping issues with this. It's not a problem. We can sort them out later on kind of thing. But as you can see, we've got issues here. What we can do now is select our spoke again, go back in, and we can see we, there's our issue kind of thing. It's not an exact size, but it's easy to fix, you know what I mean? So if you just go in, press G, Get it round about. Boop. Here we go. Here's a good one. Yeah. So we kind of we've kind of got them all, haven't we? Now the next thing we can do is tick this merge button, and we, if we open it up, we can put merge the first and last copies, and that will basically suck in any extra vertices that we don't want to be like messing with. Yeah. So. Now we've done this, we can basically back out and we can apply these these settings. Make sure you apply your mirror first because it will break otherwise. <laughs> so if we apply the mirror and then we apply the array and then go back in, we can see we've got a lovely wheel now. Oh yeah. Well, usually you, you'll probably have issues like we've got this here, haven't we? So what we can do with this is just quickly go around, merge at centers, merge at center, magic center and just tidy it up you know what i mean you're always going to have issues kind of thing but for the sakes of how simple it is to fix you know what i mean it's it's nice just to this is good now once you've been around and you've got this should we check underneath make sure it's working first Let's hide that because it's really starting to bug me. <laughs> right. I think we're all good. I can't really see what's happening. Yeah, that's the inside, isn't it? So now we have our lovely wheel. If we quickly right click and press shade auto smooth, because if we shade smooth, it'll probably. All... Oh, no, we. Yes, we can. We'll shade smooth it. 
Why does it not look like it's shaded? Then it's smooth. Because <laughs> we're not clicked on it. If you click shade smooth, <clears throat> you can see it looks awful. So <laughs> if we click for now, shade auto smooth, it'll help us out. You know what I mean? Just just helps present it a little bit better. And we go back in. We can now continue to work on our model. I was hoping to show you this tool. It's a good tool. If we select this ring here, yeah, you can just see it. Right, we've selected that center ring. What we can do now is, if you go into loop tools, which is also an add-on, if you just go to your preferences and change the add-ons, what we can do is press this button, circle, and it'll recircle it, you know what I mean? Like, make it an absolutely perfect circle. So, say on the, like, the rims here, where you've been messing with these and they're slightly bent, in the end, you can just like select the whole loop and then press circle, and it will like tidy your circle up for you, which is an amazing tool. You can also like flatten things, which is I find useful, because like these inner spokes, you never really get them like truly bang on. So it's nice just to like press that after, and then we can continue building the wheel basically. So if we extrude down the middle, scale it in a bit, because it's likely scaled in. Probably should use that image. Then we correct it, and then we extrude, scale it in to there, and then we can extrude, oh, extrude scale, extrude Z, and you've got yourself a wheel basically. Shall we change the color? If you want to change the color, obviously, just put a new material on it, change it, bring some metallic on it. We've got ourselves a wheel, effectively. Now, we would like it to be a bit smoother, won't we? Because these edges are a bit jagged. So if we just quickly chuck a subdivision surface on it and bang it on three, I always find three is good. We can see we've got a nice round edge now, kind of thing, with a low poly image. Oof, that looks so good! Oh my days! Right then, next thing is we need to do wheel nuts, I think. So let's build some wheel nuts. It's fairly simple. It's the same as before. We make a new cylinder, 6x6, six six, because we've been doing 6 spokes, so I kept it to 6. And then we add an array like we do before. But this time, on the image, it shows a 4-spoke. Now, if, if you know cars, 4-spoke means weak. So I've gone for at least a 5-spoke, and it makes it more complicated to teach you a little more. So we'd add our array, and obviously we've got our handle, which is our empty. So if we rotate the Z, we can bang our nuts on them. and you've got yourself like the preliminary stage that we need so that you've basically got five nuts now what we can do is now apply that modifier so if we select the nuts and apply the array like so what we can do now is go onto the wheel and then select a boolean which we've got here look and if we select the wheel nut holes lol we can then basically chop a hole into this and we need the union and we also need it to be fast, otherwise it won't work. And in order to see this, did you see it then? If In order to see it, we need to then turn off the wheel nut holes, yeah? So now we have our nut holes. <laughs> oh. So next step is we need to apply this bowlean to the wheel. So if we press apply, and then we go back into edit mode, we can actually see our holes on the surface. But obviously it's destroyed our geometry, so what we need to do now is go in and fix it. It's quite simple, to be honest. I'll quickly show you. The concept simple is like we, we've obviously put a six-sided circle in and we need to keep everything as squares, don't we? So we need to create two more loop rings for these two edges on the six, on the 50p, you know what I mean? And basically just join them in like that. So the first job we can do is basically just go around using the knife tool, which is K for knife, and just put in some extra loop cuts for it. Really simple. So now we've got our loop cuts in, we can concentrate on each individual one. And it's a very simple process. It's same as before. If we go into one adverts and we select that one there, and we basically we want to keep that that shape, don't we? So we always select the stray one, and then the one that we want to keep, press merge at last, and then it'll like tidy it up for you. Yeah, it's that simple. It's like this one. You don't really need it, so you may as well just Well, do you need it? We'll merge this one anyway. Merge at center. We do need that one because it creates a four, you know what I mean, a square. We've got to concentrate on making sure we've always got squares, so. Whereas like this one, it's, may as well, well, 
that one will dissolve the vertice. And then this one will merge it into that one, yeah? So merge it last. We've got as four, whereas we've got a five here, haven't we? So what we need to do is merge that one into there. So if we put merge it last, and it creates a four, you know what I mean? And then we've got that same problem here. We've got five, so if we go here, merge it last. And then same again here. It's like merge it last. And then before, there you go, you fixed your hole, basically. You know what I mean? It's really, really simple. You've just got to go around and do it to all of them. Some of them are like iffy like that one, whereas you could probably just select that and pull it out a little bit so it's not as like close to it. Yeah. So I will I'll fix that. There you go. Sorted. So what we can do now is add a crease to these edges just to it just helps me see them basically. Let's just knock a crease up. And what we can do now is obviously extrude and go down. Which is awesome. And if we select here into individual origins so that we can scale each one individually and just like bring it in a little bit like that. Because at the same time we also need to extrude and scale it in again just because there's a flat edge for it, isn't there? So we've got our wheel nut holes. Might not necessarily need to be that deep, to be honest, but you know what I mean? That's how you make your nut hole. <laughs> it's really simple. So there we are again with a subdivision surface just to show you. I feel like the nut holes are big enough. They could be a little bit bigger, but it's always a guesswork. Use your reference images and do your best with it, basically. There's a last couple of steps with this now. If you look at your edges, they look very sharp, don't they? And it's like we kind of want to soften them a little. So what we need to do now is basically bevel these edges. I like to do it at the very end because if you don't and you, you want to move something, it's an absolute nightmare. So. If we select, because these, well, I'll show you on this one. This circle edge here does not need to be that sharp, does it? So if we press Control and B, we can basically bevel that edge, can't we? Now, I usually go for triples, just to soften it up. And then once you've done it, turn your mean crease off, because you don't need it once you've got the bevel. And it makes it a lot more softy, you know what I mean? If we just back out, it's a lot more easy on the eyes, you know what I mean? And that's how it should be, really. So if we were to do that edge there, and the round edge and the edges of the wheel nuts. Yeah, let's do that now. So if you just want to widen up the bevel as well, just split the vertices open a little bit like that. And we've got a lovely now rounded edge. I, like bevels are very important kind of thing. You should always try and do them. Sometimes on little details like this, you can just go up and put your mean crease down to 0 0.5 and that will kind of do. But it's not always the move, you know what I mean? You could try it to 0 0.2. You know what I mean? You can achieve that bevel with knocking that down at the same time, but if you really want to spread it, you've got you've got to bevel it basically. It's like these edges here. Shall we see if we can get away with just knocking it down to 0 0.5? Let's have a go. And then obviously we want to tie it into that one there. So we press 0 0.5. Then look at it. It's good. But you have like issues like here kind of thing. So it's better to bevel it. So if we go back in, uh, we don't even need it after that. So if we turn it off, we also need to include the, that one there. Can you see it? If we check that one, we also need to include that one there just to make sure it's a complete loop. Yeah. And if we do a control and B, bevel it up, not too wide like that, then we will find actually turn the crease off we will have a lovely soft edge now kind of thing that's perfect now obviously you might want to go in and like turn this off turn the increase off so it actually blends in you know what I mean well if you go around and do that to all your wheels you probably could have done this before you did the array but at the same time you can just chop out that one section and redo the array if you want to you know what I mean so it's not a big issue so now I'd like to also knock down these kind of thing these these are the kind of ones that you do 0 0.5 and it's like bang on because you do want that hard edge but you just want it a bit softy you know what I mean so I've got 0 0.5 lock those down now this under one's a little tricky one and it might be worth just leaving it sharp you know what I mean so let me just do that one because you've got to go underneath for this one and select it but sometimes if you just press control that's the move you know what I mean you can just go and it'll just figure it out for you. Oop. Oh my gosh. 
the night now. Well, like I say, just keep pressing control. You know where you want to go, so. Let's get it round about. Just control, select, control, select. Are we there yet? I think we are, aren't we? Right, this one here. This one could be a tricky one because it's like joining that edge. But if we try and bevel it, let's see what happens. Are we going? Yeah. See, like, it's it's not going to happen, that one. So it might be worth just knocking it down to 0 0.5 and then checking, see if we've got any issues underneath. And it looks like we've got away with it. That's not bad at all. I'm happy with that. You know what I mean? I mean, we should be looking at this one here. So we've got an issue here. And that's likely because we ain't got an edge loop around there. Uh, we need an edge loop around it effectively so can we get away with doing it on the bottom side if we chuck a on the, we're still going to have an issue so if we chuck one if we I can, so we can see if we chuck one round here we might be able to see see it's a tricky tricky game you play so is it worth just <laughs> not bothering, you know what I mean? I mean, do you even see it? That's the thing. We've got on 0 0.5. You zoom out. Realistically, when you're looking at the wheel, you're not you're not going to see it, you know what I mean? So, should we put a bit of gloss on it as well? Just so we can actually... Do you like Blender's new layout as well? It's different. You know what I mean? You put a bit of gloss on it, you're not even going to notice anyway. So, I'd say that's a win on that. So, if you go around and basically just bevel everything effectively... Alright, forget these wheels. Mm. Let me select all the edge loops like this. Make sure you get the odd ones. Right. So, if we press Ctrl B and we bevel them, kind of keep it there. And we turn the creases off. Then we've got lovely bolt holes now, you know what I mean? Lovely bolt holes, looks way better now. So. And then just go around and basically do the same to everything. Let me just finish the model, because obviously you need to now finish the back, don't you? So, you extrude on the Z, scale it up a little bit. And we extrude, scale, extrude, Z, extrude, scale. You got yourself a wheel, and it's just pretty cool. Like, the only thing left now is, realistically, is building an attire for it, isn't it? So, if you liked this video, it, it took a long time. I didn't realise how difficult it actually is to build a wheel, but this is it, you know what I mean? And if you'd like to know how to now build the tire for it and say like the sticker that goes on it, subscribe and like this video so you can refer back to it and the next video is going to be the tire video, you know what I mean? So thank you for watching. I'll shut up. I'm ever so sorry. Bye, see you in a bit.